to engineer uh, Kenneth looking at the role of government in ensuring that um, we can have safe housing and uh, affordable at that because when you talk about the real estate sector when you talk about housing we're speaking in millions of shillings how are you making it affordable for someone number one who wants to invest but also someone who wants to buy because we were earlier on, earlier on I was looking at the housing deficit that we have. And unfortunately, when we look at our uh, population growth vis-a-vis uh, -vis the growth of the economy, uh, the two are not at par at all. Um, thank you, Mildred, and our dear audience. Uh, Engineer Kijuka Kenneth is my name. And I am the Chief Executive Officer at National Housing which is Uganda's oldest real estate and construction company. If you take starting point being independence, 1962. And so National Housing was born 1964. This year we'll celebrate 60 years of that milestone serving this country with respect to real estate and construction. My discussion this afternoon I would love to flip it a little, because when you take me straight to answer the question of affordability and what the market needs and what is available for business, I want to say that Uganda will stand at a very privileged position with respect to three parameters. You've talked about population growth, but when you talk about real estate, if you go to the real estate concise definitions and dictionaries, you'll find that it is the land and the immovable, the two parameters, land and the immovable property on that land. I want to say, Mildred and our audience, that much of what we have, Uganda, we have the land, but we have a lot of movable housing. <laughs> so if we're going to think real estate as business, let this sink in your mind that it is land and immovable. And I want to define these parameters. For starters, land is fixed. Uganda, even if we wanted to sit houses on all the entire land, then of course we will not have land left for agriculture and other activities for humanity. So land is fixed. And the first entry point in real estate is going to be land. Somebody has talked about titling of the land. You've got to look at which land and the, the services around the land. Who owns the land? What is the, the land policies locally? vis-a-vis -vis other countries. Now, Uganda, Mildred, the tenure, land ownership tenure has about three categories. You have the leasehold, but also you have the freehold, and others you have like mile tenure of, of land. Those are moving targets. Land does not know that I'm freehold, Neither does it know that I am leasehold. Yeah. Neither does it know that I am Milo or customary. All land knows that I have the same carrying capacity. This is the first point I want to make. That if you hold land, don't view land with respect to ownership. Because that has limited a lot of investments. Mm. Whether it's Milo or lease or freehold or customary, it has the same capacity to hold this hotel with respect to business. But two, to make sure we optimally use land for real estate and the immovable property on land largely is housing. Roads can transition, services, water, electricity can move. But housing, once you set it up, those of you who have been in countries, US, UK, and elsewhere, you'll find buildings that have lived 500 years, 1,000 years. And that's what is called real estate. So real estate lives beyond, over and above the owner who established. And so when I said I wanted to tweak the discussion, is that those of you who are going to be interested in looking at real estate as a business, you don't look at the gains now. You start from the end point. Mm. If I put up a hotel like this, I would use it over my lifetime. By the way, land and humanity, the human being is the leased property on land. You can live maximum 100 but the building will live 500 years. So look at usage beyond yourself as a starting point. And that will define the quality, the specification, and the level of investment. The second parameter is the people. 
Uganda, we have the benefit of a growing population. Mildred, you've mentioned it. We are now about 46 million Ugandans. And in the next, by 2050, we're going to be 100 million Ugandans. What that means, the biggest business opportunity in real estate is the people. Because you're building for the people. Whether it's residential, whether it's commercial, because people sleep, later on transition their commercial properties to work, and that synergy must be seen through the business real estate business. Whether it's industrial hubs, manufacturing, or whether it's institutional where all our children go for education. So think holistically in terms of if I'm going to make money, if I'm going to position this hotel here as a real estate business, then you're looking at the rest of the networks. But importantly, you're building for the people. So Uganda having a growing population is the second biggest opportunity that we have. In some countries, population is going down. And our colleagues in Namibia, they're only 3 million. I do not know how much land mass they have. But in Uganda, we only have a fixed land mass of 241,000 square kilometers. But we cannot think we cover it with housing. Okay. Lastly, Mildred is indeed now what we call real estate, which I said, if you look at it from the end point, that you're not building for yourself, you're building for the future. That way you'll dictate the networks, the services, because what brings down our business, the cost centers you're talking about, is putting up a hotel like this and you don't have an access. Put up a hotel which needs three phase, you have single phase in the neighborhood. Put up a building like this, you don't have a sewer system where you can drain. These customers will not come. So lastly, those of you who are thinking of real estate as residential, Uganda's case we have also seen many people move into their homes, changing them into offices. How many of you, since we said it would be interactive, have moved from the commercial building to designated buildings into their homes and converted them into offices? By show of hands. Now, initial planning was residential with yeah. the environment around it. Whether it is garbage management, whether it is noise, whether it is pollution. And all of a sudden you transition it into a, a, a commercial property office space. So I want to suggest to allow other guys to come in that if we want to think business, real estate and business, we've got to think holistically and begin to plan for the future, not for yourself. Because for you, you may not change the environment around yourself, but you have the ability to dictate the investment you do today to return handsomely 10, 50, 30, 100 years to come. Thank you. Mm -hmm.